Hey everybody, welcome to the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe, click that bell right away. Don't forget, because we are breaking down part two of the wide receivers. Those secondary guys, look, the decisions are a bit harder when they're not at the top. Don't miss a moment. Hey, it's me, the guy who introduces the show. Listen to my amazing voice. Now, check out the amazing Ultimate Draft Kit. The guys spend all off-season creating this bad boy, and they keep it updated all off-season. It's got their full projections, breakouts, sleepers, busts, over 100 player profile videos. It's even got a mobile app. Has my incredible voice lulled you into a deep sense of trust and commitment? Perfect. Now check out ultimatedraftkit.com and get ready to win your league. Now, back to the show. Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Hey, everybody. What a delightful day. Wednesday, August 12, 2020. The Fantasy Footballers, Andy, Mike, and Jason back with you. Welcome in. If you're brand new, thank you for joining us. Mm. Yes. If you've been here before, uh, thank, thank you, you for joining us. Yeah, a little bit less, so. <laughs> oh, certainly. You've already subscribed. These new <laughs> listeners still need to subscribe, it's so please do. The old cable company. Like we, oh, uh, yeah. I hate if that. If you're a new customer, you're the best. Forcing you to switch or, or cell phone companies. If you've it's gotta- a cable company, though, that means that um, our new listeners get the UDK for 18 cents. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then the existing users, it's $230. You've been supporting us for a while? Thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> what, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Do we have a uh, one of those one eight hundred numbers for canceling our subscription? Oh yeah, you must call. There's no online, uh, and when you call, you'll get a a voicemail saying, "Here's where you can mail your cancellation letter." Oh nope. yeah, printed words do not count. This no. has to be handwritten. No, here's the truth. Notarized Foot as well. Foot Clan. Yes, of course. We love you. We appreciate you. Yeah, we thank, thank you. you. We're here for you. And thanks for subscribing and reviewing the show on Apple Podcasts. We appreciate that as well. Yep. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to know all of the latest happenings around here, which are bountiful happenings. That's well said. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. <laughs> UltimateDraftKid.com for the UDK. A dollar from every UDK goes to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. We're partnering with them once again in 2020 uh, to help support St. Jude. And uh, let's get into some buy sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. We have another wide receiver rankings show today, and our Buy Sell follows that theme, and we've uh, Brooks has chosen three guys outside of our top 20 for today's Buy Sell segment. So uh, buy or sell these wide receivers to outperform their current average draft position, starting with the man with the strange uh, clavicle, <laughs> Keenan Allen. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a lot of bit. That's not how an arm should look. Well, the, Matthew Betts, our injury guy, did post about it on Twitter, and he said, don't worry about it. Yeah, we're referring to Keenan Allen on Zoom on Hard Knocks, which was uh, – it's like the equivalent of the wide receiver with the fingers that are all bent the wrong yeah. way. This was like – Taking it to the next level. Oh, it, we know it's not supposed to look like that. His shoulder grew something special. Uh, yep. His current average draft position is the wide receiver 21. Uh, will Keenan Allen outperform that ADP, buy or sell? Keenan Allen might be the absolute hardest wide receiver to rank this year because he's, he's a great player. He's an elite route runner. He deserves volume, but he... He has to see that volume. And aside from like, I think his rookie year, you know, he was hitting hitting off big plays. But since then, it's just been he needs volume. And 
will he actually get that if it's Taylor as the quarterback or if it's Herbert at quarterback and we we just don't know. I currently have him two ranked two spots behind his ADP, but like his range of outcomes is he's a great wide it's, receiver. It's wild to me. Like he could could he be a top twelve wide receiver? Yeah, yeah it's not without the realm of possibility. I mean, if Ty, if Tyrod Taylor ends up being the starter for the whole season, which I think is a it, realistic outcome, it looks okay. Yeah, uh, if that were to happen, and and Keenan goes a little bit deeper and isn't just the possession guy, he could finish there. I don't have that happening. So, I'm Mike, did you sell or did you buy? I passed it over to Jason. <laughs> <laughs> this one's tough. I'm going to sell. Um, I, I, I project that Herbert will get on the field at some point. I think that the deep threat will stay Mike Williams. This is not buy, sell, pass. No, no, no. I'm, I'm selling. Mike. Yeah. Come on, Mike. Look, I, would, I just I set him up with an incredible argument. I laid out all the sides of it. And so you're responsible I, I was making for it, nothing. No, I was making it way easier for Andy, Jason. Andy has brought this up in the past, but I want to bring the specificity to it. Larry Fitzgerald in the middle of his prime, obviously great route runner, great hands, best, you know, Hall maybe the second best wide receiver of all time. In the middle of his prime, after finishing fantasy wide receiver five and well before coming back with you know, three in a row, top 12 years, when he had bad quarterback play, he was the wide receiver 37, 17, and 52 in back-to-back-to-back -back -back years. In his prime. In his prime. Well, here's the thing. Here, I heard a 17 in there. Here's a spoiler sure. alert. I'm going to buy that all three of these players outperform their ADP. The reason that they have this ADP is because I'm not going to know when they're going to do the damage. The Tyrod Taylor factor with Keenan Allen, I am not confident that Keenan will be a consistent fantasy output. He will ball out because he's great. The other two guys on the list, Julian Edelman at wide receiver 30, Michael Gallup at wide receiver 32. I think all three of these will outperform their ADP, assuming they don't get hurt. Do I think I'll be able to predict when it happens? No. I don't have confidence in that. Would, so would you draft them at their ADP? You're on the clock. You're right here at their average draft you know, value. Will you put them on your fantasy roster? I mean, it's hard to look at Julian Edelman, who finished as the wide receiver 10 last year. Michael Gallup, who finished at wide receiver 22 last year. Look at them in the seventh round and say, I'm not going to draft them. I mean, I sure. I mean, those names are going to be hard to – Keenan Allen is going to be hard to pass up in the fifth round when I'm staring down that name versus somebody else that has been less proven. But – um yeah, I mean, I I draft all of them at their draft position. I think the only person that I'm going to draft at their draft position is Michael Gallup. If you look at the situation of all three of these guys, it's gotten worse for Edelman, gotten worse for Keenan Allen, which is why they're lower. But for Michael Gallup, I don't believe his situation's gotten worse. He's coming into year three, same system, same quarterback. Now, perception is that it's gotten worse because CeeDee Lamb has come in, but I don't think that hurts him. What Randall about the Blake Jarwin target hog? Well, I mean, you lost Jason Witten and you lost Randall Cobb, 83 targets each. Jarwin is going to get his. I hope he gets 83 <laughs> targets. And it, you A can week. <laughs> yeah. It's Jarwin season. Yeah, so, so the only one you're buying is Michael Gallup in Possibly, terms of yes. drafting. Mike? I, I'm willing to draft all three of these guys. I mean, Keenan Allen, who's three straight years as a top 12 wide receiver, I get it. You know, the, bringing up the, the, the comp to Larry – Taylor is an adequate quarterback. It's not that he is bad at all. It's it's the volume. Would the volume get there? Well, is he willing to uh, check down a little bit more to, to keep his eyes downfield without running? Because that's part of Taylor's game. That's why he's uh, good at doing what he what he does. So this, glad, is, this is not Derek but Anderson. We, we, we went is, down this road, with, and now Sammy's proven to be inconsistent forever. But Sammy Watkins was a top 15 wide receiver draft capital-wise when Tyrod was there and destroyed people's fantasy league. Yeah, <laughs> Mahomes can't even get Sammy Watkins to do anything. I, I am but glad Taylor you, can. I am glad you, you bring up the fact, though, that it, the comp to Larry isn't completely fair because this isn't an atrocious quarterback. Yes. So we don't know Tyrod what he is, is right now. I mean, the last time we saw him out there yeah, on the he, field. He was not great for he Cleveland. He was not great but. for Cleveland. It has been a while. We know 3,000 yards is probably the peak of what you'd get from Tyrod Taylor. So, yeah, they're, they're, those are the question marks. It's funny, though, that you you selected the, the guy who finished wide receiver 22 and not either of the guys that were in the top <laughs> 10 last year. If they were to take a step back significantly, maybe they'd be at 22. 
But yeah, I mean, arrow up versus arrow down. I look to the future, my friends. Hey, I Gallup is an arrow sideways for me. I'm huh? I'm 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 in with with Gallup, and I gotta apparently adjust. You're gonna my, get him everywhere then. Yeah, I, I'm with it, and I'm with Julian Edelman too. I think like Cam. I believe Cam is ready to go. And the last time we saw a healthy Cam, he was a different quarterback. He was an accurate quarterback. And Julian Edelman's coming off the most yards of his career. He look injury risk, absolutely. But as my wide receiver two or even three, um, I'm with that. We could have bought or sold like ten question marks per player. For, oh yeah, <laughs> for these three Just guys. Each question. Uh, that was buy or sell. Brought to you by Pristine Auction. Recently auctioned, Keenan Allen signed jersey went for seventy seven dollars. Michael Gallup signed jersey went for seventy two dollars. Nice. Uh, they got Fantasy Week starting tomorrow, which is an auction dedicated to active fantasy football players. So they're building out something special for you. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Which means that Blake Jarwin jerseys will be available. That's likely. They made more than one. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit towards that first sports memorabilia purchase. Uh, we don't have any news and notes we're going to get into on today's episode. We have the wide receiver rankings part two today. I will. I know both of you watched Hard Knocks last night. I saw five minutes of it before I fell asleep. Uh, tried to fall asleep, and uh, I saw enough to see you know Anthony Lynn tell everybody that he had COVID, and um, from my understanding, most of the episode was dominated by that storyline. It, it was. What was your reaction to the episode? Uh, my reaction on was actually optimism i mean we're all inundated with COVID news non-stop never so, heard of it so i get the fact that people when they're watching it they're like oh here we go again more COVID news but it look at the nfl they're showing you what the nfl wants you to see of course but they really do look like they are taking the steps that they can take and they can control obviously they're going to be on the field running into each other, breathing on each other, spitting on each other. You can't prevent contact then, but all the other times they're working on it, man. I loved seeing McVay up there saying, guys, we got to be better at this. I need to be better at this. Please hold me accountable. And they're all, the fact that, that Lynn jumped on that Zoom meeting at the beginning of the episode said, I, I can't promise you you won't get it. I got it. And everyone's like, whoa, okay. Now, yeah. I, now I know someone who got it and hearing Anthony Lynn really talk about getting the virus saying, you know, I'm, I'm used to fixing the problem and then I got infected and now I'm part of the problem. So it was like seeing the man, Anthony Lynn, it's just, it was, it was refreshing. It's always refreshing to see these players as human beings because oh, that's my favorite it, part, but your thoughts are way deeper than mine <laughs> because my favorite part was watching oh. these per the usual Jason, <laughs> because my, my favorite part was watching these, just, uh, just, just I know unbelievable your favorite part. men. Yeah. Unbelievable. These guys are the, the strongest, Did most you athletic. See Aaron Donald with and, his shirt off. Well, no. Yeah, well, oh my goodness. <laughs> that is, that's not allowed. But my problem, or my, my point here, is watching them get the tests and worry about the needles and worry about the Q-tips in the nose. And they're, they're all worth Wait, I want to see him go first. I love it. I love watching these just. You can relate. Superhuman. Yes, well, to because that part I am. Of being an athlete. Right. I am like, you know, I know you guys look at me and go, that's a man. That's a, that's a 1% athlete. I, it that's just, it makes me feel good knowing that I'm not the only superhuman we'll, call, we'll use the word superhuman that also has fears of things like needles and spiders now so, y yesterday was the day that you jumped and hurt yourself because of a yes. uh, an ice cream wrapper that is correct <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's going to be interesting i mean the nfl or the nhl and the nba has proven this uh incredible fact that if if you don't have the virus, you can't get the virus. Right. Um, That's what it's all about. In, in either of those leagues, you've had negative tests after negative tests. So if players are responsible, if more teams do these bubbles, you're going to have a situation where, yeah, I mean, they're colliding into each other on the NBA court and they're not catching the virus because they don't have it. So right. hopefully that's the case that we get in the NFL. Wide receivers. But obviously, wear your masks in the car. That is when you're driving by yourself. I don't judge people who want to mask in up in the car. The car. That's fine. They're just so I, comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I I judge them. All right, number eleven, Adam Thielen. Our consensus 
Uh, where are we going, Brooks? Top 24 today, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, right. All right, number 11, Adam Thielen. 15 on my list, 11 on Jason's, 13 on Mike's. Injury-plagued season. No more Stephon Diggs. Coming off of eight, number 10 and number seven finish in 2017 and 2018. And, uh, you know, this is a team that made a huge transition last year to being a very low passing volume team. This is Dalvin Cook's team last season. Uh, Thielen finished at 61, like I said, injuries throughout the year and really hurt fantasy owners, really left some burns because he tried Mm -hmm. to come back in week nine against Kansas City and scored zero points. A lot of people started him there. Um, He tried to come back in weeks 15 and 16 when he finished 63rd and one. 112 maybe you Fewer gave up by then. people yeah. started him by then <laughs> yes learned your lesson um but you guys are both pretty optimistic about adam thielen having a bounce back in 2020 yeah he was he was great up until the first injury through those first six games he had 391 yards and six touchdowns and yet look it's a low volume offense but 63 receptions and over 1100 yards that's what stefan diggs had last year that's what Adam Thielen does not have to uh, compete with anymore. Now it's either first round pick Justin Jefferson or someone else. Like it's it's not one A one B. Who's who's the man for the Minnesota Vikings? It's Adam Thielen, and he. If you're watching him play in those first few games, he hadn't lost anything. He just he suffered an injury and couldn't make it back to health. So I'm still in on Thielen. That that I really I I would love to draft Thielen in the third round. Yeah, I'm, I am in on Thielen. Here's why. Three years ago, he was a top 10 wide receiver. Two years ago, he was a top 10 wide receiver. But then last year, they changed to being a run-heavy team that passes the ball far less. And before he got injured through the first six weeks, he was a top 10 wide receiver. So the only time we've seen him healthy on the field, he's been a top 10 wide receiver. He's not over the hill. You know, he's, I, think, I think last year's numbers were more deceptive, though. You're saying that because of the touchdowns. But what I would argue is that the the volume coming down and being a defense and run first team is going to make the efficiency you're passing maybe near the goal line more more touchdown opportunities per pass um than than what it was but here's the the slight argument i would change from the just uh, efficiency only minnesota's defense has to be good to run the ball they have to be in you know i mean that's just you can't just run the ball uh, highest in the league when you're down it, it's it's impossible minnesota's defense is no longer great i i i believe that this year minnesota's defense is going to stink i base that on the fact that they've lost a lot of their good players and at the second half of last year they stunk and if you look at the pace between kirk cousins first half and second half of the season he was on pace for 100 more targets in the second half than in the first half because he had to. And that's my thing with the Vikings. I I know they want to be defense and run. And they're going to do everything in their power to run the ball. And I think they'll be good at it because of Coops. But at some point, I, I don't think they throw as little as they did last year. Yeah, the Adam Thielen pace on receptions, which is why I brought up the deceiving numbers. He was only on pace for 60 receptions through the first seven weeks. So those weeks, even though he was putting up fantasy finishes, he scored in all but two of those weeks which was a little bit like the end of the year for Cooper Cup when you didn't see the passing volume. Um, sure. And so I think he's a little bit more touchdown dependent than we think, and there's a little bit more risk. That's why I have him a little bit lower. Uh, but he is the guy. He's the guy. I don't think 130 targets are going to come his way again myself. I, that's that's fair because I, I, you know, when he was living the huge target life, that was a different offense. But I think at the end of the day, he's still – a great wide receiver who's the clear one for a team that is going to have a, a pretty good offense. And so that's, you know, for those reasons, Shark Tank, I'm in. Okay. Ooh. Cooper Cup. Okay. Cooper Cup at number 12. Just brought him up. Last year, 94 for 11, 61, and 10 on 134 targets. Uh, he was outstanding. But the end of the year, we've talked about it a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the numbers came down for Cooper Cup. His good weeks were touchdown dependent. He wasn't on the field as much as Robert Woods, and the team was running some two tight end sets quite frequently. It was funny on uh, 
uh, hard knocks last night. There was a, a scene when they were running the hurry up and McVeigh shouting, stay in the 12, <laughs> stay in 12. And I'm like, oh, oh no. Well, and you brought up yesterday on the show too, Cooper Cup's had some struggles getting um, off of press coverage. Yeah. Cooper Cup is a slot wide receiver. Yeah, and the thing for Cooper Cup is he is a he is the go to target for this team inside the red zone. So again, hard to predict touchdown totals year over year, but Cooper Cup's one of those players that I'd put in the top five with the double digit touchdown capability year over year in a passing offense that passes the ball 200 more times than Kirk Cousins does. So if you look at Cooper Cup, you look at Adam Thielen, I like 200 more attempts. I like Sean McVay. Uh, that's why I have Cooper Cup significantly higher than Adam Thielen. When you look at Brandon Cooks leaving, regardless of the confidence in 12 personnel, where are you with Cooper Cup, Mike? Because you have him way down the Yeah, list. I do. I, I'm not confident at all. It, over those... Uh, you know that 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 stretch you talked about at the end of the season, he was averaging five for fifty six, but he did score in all of them. So he, I mean, he salvaged his his fantasy day. I just have, I don't know what the Rams' offense is going to be. I lean more that they trading away Brandon Cooks, the emergence of Higby, and the hope for Gerald Everett that they will be running the the twelve personnel a bit more, and that. That not that that means that Cooper Cup is is completely Houdini'd for <clears throat> for fantasy purposes, but he won't return on where he's being drafted in in my projections. And maybe it was the ACL recovery at the end of the year. Maybe it was a lot of things, but it it did happen, and it was it was very very bizarre. the The numbers you're talking about, Andy, for in reception perception, the numbers uh, available. If you want to look at all these all of these things where when I bring up reception perception, it's available in the ultimate draft kit. And it's Cooper Cup has never finished above the twelfth percentile in success versus man or press coverage. Like this he succeeds because McVeigh puts him in great positions. He's six two. That's not the normal height of, of of a slot wide receiver. That's why it works for him. But if there's no slot that's I similar have, to what Juju has seen success doing, in right? The slot. Yeah, and, size, and, size wise too. And that's and Juju is a slot wide receiver. And when, and again, I'm not saying calling someone a slot wide receiver as a dirty word. It's just this is where you fit in the offense. As, Jarvis Landry says thanks. <laughs> love Jarvis, but so I I have my concerns. I probably won't be drafting Cooper Cup, but I know you guys are all about it. Yeah, in, in the fourth round right now, I, I do like Cooper Cup. I believe in McVeigh. I believe in Cup. I know that he has bad reception perception numbers against press, but like you said, what has McVeigh been great at doing with Cooper Cup? Putting him in a position to win. McVeigh is, you know, I, I, I will say that I believe McVeigh is smarter at football than me. I'm going to put myself You're willing out. To I'm say willing that? to go that far. That's, I'm he's, proud of you. Well, he's very smart. How's he with needles and with uh, the test? I'm sure he's afraid of them too, Andy. <laughs> okay. Um, we're all human. Uh, so, it, But the reality is I, I trust the offense, and while we saw the back half of the year, the, the lower passing for him, the lower targets, receptions, yardage, um, that was also where he was basically splitting time with Brandon Cooks. I think the absence of Brandon Cooks means that the, uh, you know, the, the 12 personnel will basically, you're going to have four players of, fantasy relevance r receiving players I think both tight ends will be relevant and I think Woods and Cup are going to eat uh, I'm not too worried about the the press on the outside Cooper Cup hasn't been asked to do that a lot now if that's what he's going to do I think that's what he's going to work on he's averaged a touchdown every 9.3 catches over a three-year span last year he was the wide receiver four for the first half and then wide receiver 33 over the second half he uh He's going to be fun to watch. I mean, I think Robert Woods and Cooper Cup, I have both guys in my top 10, so I am planting a flag with that offense. Sure, and and I've been asked on other podcasts, like, is there a player you have ranked low that you are concerned is going to make you look foolish? And my answer is always Cooper Cup. I don't feel, I'm, uh, I don't feel like complete and total conviction that Cooper Cup is going to be a bust. That's just, uh, that I'm, I'm concerned and I'm not drafting him. All right, Allen Robinson and number 13, perennially undervalued. Yeah. Also perennially stuck with the wrong quarterback. 
Also that true. That's very true. And uh, we have some disparity here as well. I'm at 11. Mike's at 9. Jason's at 21, his current av- average draft position. By the way, I should have given that for Cooper Cup. He's being drafted as the wide receiver 15. Uh, Allen Robinson's up at wide receiver 12. So uh, this is year seven for Allen Robinson. Lost the year right in the middle with the injury. But seven years of Blake Bortles and Mitch Trubisky for Allen Robinson. So he doesn't, just not right. doesn't get a lot of sleep. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers go out to you, Allen. <laughs> Could be uh, buoyed, that's right, buoyed, by Nick Foles. Was that a Sam Bowie reference? Uh, a Sam? No, not Sam Bowie. <laughs> oh, I, was, I, I don't get your reference. Who what makes you a Sam about? Bowie reference, first of all? I, I don't know. You're talking about like going back to Jordan's draft yes. year? No, it wasn't a Sam Bowie the reference. The things that float on the water that lift, yeah. you know. That's like a, that's a, a, a turn of phrase. Really? I, be- I believe yeah. it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, we all learn things every day. <laughs> I know what a buoy is out on the water, but I've never... <laughs> and that is the buoy in which I believe this turn of phrase is based upon, <laughs> not the Sam buoy of the Portland Trailblazers. Cannot confirm, but but likely. But likely, yeah. <laughs> this is but does buoy buoy? This buoy. is where I look it up and it's a Sam buoy reference. <laughs> uh, moving forward in the episode... Um, Third most targets among wide receivers last year. 154 targets is ridiculous. And he had a couple of seasons like that in Jacksonville with 150 plus. So I think, I, I know, I know the the reason the disparity in our rankings exists is based upon that number. It's based upon the belief that, uh, for Mike and myself, that he is going to be the same thing he's been, you know, that he was last year, which is a target monster. He mm-hmm. was the original, by the way. Yes. On the show, the target monster. And that he's a great wide receiver, and those things kind of just raise you to the top. That does beg the question. We looked at, you know, someone like Keenan Allen, and we took him down a peg because of the... Well, the, different quarterback. Sure. But we saw a really different Mitch Trubisky last year than the year before. Not sure who we're going to have this year. So Which Jake, one do you want? The one that he was great with or the one that looked promising you're saying two, Which, two years Trubisky. ago where he went almost went to the playoffs and exactly but Allen robinson wasn't quite as great then i mean he's Allen robinson i want wide i want mitch trubisky from two years ago because i don't think Allen robinson snap percentages are i, mean, I think they're going to mimic what they were last year when he played 16 when he was on the field 94 percent of the time that means he needs to run they need to run no M- mitchell trubisky needs to run gotcha like he yeah. he when he's running around they can win games. When he's not, they won't. He's just an unstoppable wide receiver so, when you give, you give him the opportunity. I'm definitely the lowest uh, here. I, I've talked about this before. I, I'm not as confident as you guys in the target volume, but I did want to play a quick game. Of course you did. All right. All yeah, right. Of course you did. Here we go. This game's called Allen Robinson uh-huh. or Tyler Boyd. Here okay. we go. Okay. This is data from the last two seasons, 2018 and 2019. All right. Yards per game. He Who did. had more, Allen Robinson or Tyler Boyd? Uh, Tyler Boyd. Robinson. Andy, you are correct. It was Tyler Boyd. All right. The two-year span, Tyler had a pretty impressive Okay, he did. Season. He did. This is more about how these two gentlemen play the game. Yards per reception. Allen Robinson or Tyler Boyd? That's probably... I'm going to go Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson. It is Tyler Boyd. Okay, now let's get to the fantasy. <laughs> the meat. Touchdowns. I don't Alan like Rob- very much. <laughs> Yeah, welcome to that <laughs> side of you, it, Mike. You're, you're to blame for this segment <laughs> altogether. All right, Allen Robinson or Tyler Boyd. Touchdowns in the last two seasons. Uh, Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson. It is Tyler Boyd. All right, here we go. Top 24 fantasy finishes. Allen Robinson or Tyler Boyd. Yeah, this is going to be Tyler Boyd. I don't play your game. Allen Robinson. <laughs> uh, my game is great. It is Tyler Boyd. All right, bust games. This but is exactly who- how Jason would play this game, which is all the answers are his who guy. Who has more bust games, Tyler Boyd or Allen Robinson? Probably Allen Robinson, Jason. Look, I've, I've stuck with one answer. Allen Robinson. Uh, well, he's tied. They both have uh, 14 bus games. All right. And this is in a total of uh, Allen Robinson has 
only one fewer game, 29 and 30. So they've both missed about the same amount of games. This is the point that is I, – I now, granted, the outlook here, you're getting A.J. Green back and Tyler Boyd's outlook for this season isn't quite as rosy. But I do think that – So you're drafting Boyd over Allen Robinson. Yeah, that's what course. I heard. The, I do Look, think, my, my game of Montgomery versus Todd Gurley, I'm drafting – Montgomery. That was my whole point. This Your is, whole point is you're just trying to disparage a man. One of these guys is being drafted as the 12th wide receiver, and one of these guys is left for dead in drafts. That's my point. And I think that my real point is that two years ago, Allen Robinson, yes, he was coming off of an ACL. So was Cooper Cup the, this past year. There's no excuses there. Um, is it That is just being completely thrown out. And I, I, I think that the truth of fantasy is in the middle of the last two years for Allen Robinson. Last year, I think Tyler Boyd was wide receiver 23. Allen Robinson was 11. It's interesting. I mean, it was a it was a good year for Allen Robinson, but they were a team that couldn't run the football. Mitch Trubisky struggled. The defense wasn't as strong as it was the year before when they were a shutdown defense, which I think they, you know, they obviously want to get back to that style of play that got them very close to, you know, a Super Bowl as opposed to last year's style of play, which got them close to uh, firing their head coach or something of that nature. Right. So, yeah, I mean, you you could be right. You know, 11 might be the ceiling with someone like Mitch Trubisky. But what's the ceiling with Nick Foles Ooh. or Sam Bowie? Uh, if he doesn't start the season, <laughs> ceiling is Super Bowl. All right. We want to thank HelloFresh for sponsoring the show today. You can get fr fresh, pre-measured ingredients Mouthwatering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door with HelloFresh. I'm not sure there's something I've appreciated more oh. since about, uh, I don't know, March yes, than HelloFresh <laughs> totally. and having variety and delivered <laughs> ingredients and uh. recipes to choose from and variety. and Variety has not been something common to the quarantine area of life. Sure. But it's something common to my HelloFresh experience because mm -hmm. every week something different shows up. And they have something for every single person. If you want low calorie, if you want vegetarian, if you want family friendly, yes, family friendly where the kids actually eat the food, HelloFresh can get you dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. And you, uh, you, do you actually have to go to the grocery store? No, you do not. And oh, you actually save up to 28% compared to grocery sh store shop shopping trips. And if you're doing the like grocery at home ordering, you're even saving more mm. with HelloFresh. So, uh, look, we, we absolutely stand by and love HelloFresh. And it's, Coming up clutch like Damian Lillard. Uh, all right. <laughs> Go to HelloFresh.com slash Fantasy80 and use the code Fantasy80 to get a total of $80 off. That makes sense. Including free shipping on your free box or on your first box. HelloFresh.com slash Fantasy80 and, and use the code Fantasy80 for a total of $80 off, including free shipping on your first box. Additional restrictions apply. Please visit HelloFresh.com slash Fantasy80 for more details. Mike Evans comes in at number 14. I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It's my fault, and I hate my ranking. I don't like it at all. Good, because I don't like it either. No, I I mean, it's it's absolutely my least favorite ranking. You're coming ranking. clean right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I want the truth to be known here for the Foot Clan that – I don't like where I have Mike Evans. I've got him down for a th just over 1,000 yards and eight uh, touchdowns, but it puts him at my wide receiver 19. And Mike Evans is not a good wide receiver. He is a great wide receiver. He has the record right now for consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. He's literally never not had a 1,000-yard season. He has an upgraded quarterback. I like Mike Evans. I hate my ranking. I just don't know how to get him up in, in my rankings yeah. while well, being honest. It. Let's surface some of the concerns or what you're getting. Let's let, You open up the package, and Mike Evans has 67 receptions last year, 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns, 118 targets. Um, we know that he's a great wide receiver. We also know he shares the field with another great wide receiver who was at number five on yesterday's episode, Chris Godwin, who's also uh, – have you seen the level of hype that Tom Tom Brady has been putting out on the Twitter? Mm -mm. I have not. He's become quite the hype master. It's it's practice highlights. It's yeah, uh, mm. you know this pass to Gronk, this pass to Evans, this pass to Godwin. Uh, Good touch, for you, Tom. Touchdowns, and honestly, it's got me a little bit. I mean, he just <laughs> looked he just looks so. Uh -oh. Tom Brady's got a level of determination 
that is unmatched. I mean, you look at what makes players great uh, historically, and it's just this concentration of will. And he's got it, and he's getting me on the hype videos because I just saw him connect with Chris Godwin well, yesterday. How, how concentrated is he if he's spending all this time on social media? Uh, oh, that's his team, Mike. Yeah, that's the, the TB12 tweets. TB12 tweets. Uh, but but you did have – what your experience with Mike Evans last year involved ups and downs. It involved disappearing acts, even on a team that passed as much as they did, even on a team with Jameis Winston throwing as many touchdowns as he did. There were weeks where – Mike Evans disappeared because he is not going to be a 100-catch type of player. He's going to be a down-the-field type of guy, which is something that, now you can blame the weapons, you can blame the age. Tom Brady has struggled a little bit more getting the ball downfield. Maybe he hasn't had the weapons to do it. He's good at it, but he didn't do it as often. He, yeah, he didn't do it as often. He went deep uh, just over 10% of the time compared to Jameis, who was nearly at 16% of his passes, but... Tom Brady had uh, a passer rating over a hundred uh, when he was going deep. Like he was, well, he picks his spots. Yeah, and and I mean that's that was the system he was in. This is once again we have Bruce Arians' system versus other player what they have done in the past because last year it was O.J. Howard. You no, know, will they use O.J. No, they Howard? Won't. And the answer was uh, they keep saying they want to use O.J. Howard. Uh, but they did not. But but Tom Brady, I mean, we, we've seen other quarterbacks come into the Bruce Arians system and then change how they play. Like Carson Palmer put up numbers that he had not put up in a very, very long time once he was uh, in the Bruce Arians system. So this, I still believe in Mike Evans, and uh, Jason's ranking is, is doo-doo. Yeah, no, it, it's tough because, you know, we, we saw when Arians came to Arizona, they moved Larry Fitzgerald to the slot, and the slot was – a masterful weapon for fantasy production. And then, lo and behold, Chris Godwin proved that to be right. true here. So it's the combination of the deep passing question marks with Tom Brady, can he do it, well, and the slot propensity of Tom Brady and the Aryan system that I think leads me to have this low of a ranking. But at the same time, Brady will take advantage of his best weapons. He is smart. He knows when Mike Evans has a guy beat and he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage and he's going to put it up for him. And guess what? Mike Evans is going to get the ball. So it, it's one of those things where I will draft Mike Evans ahead of my ranking here, look at the tier that he's in, uh, read the blurb that you know we write about him and, and get the context to the ranking um, because he's, he's, he's good. And I do wonder this. This is somewhat anecdotal, but I'm going to try to find the research. I feel like from memory... The deep passing over the last couple of years for Tom Brady and Drew Brees has been much better in the first half of the year than the second half of the year. Hmm. Uh, I, I want to be able to back that up. Right now, it's just from memory. I'll try to research this after the show, but I'm wondering if that means Evans could get off to a stronger start than anticipated and maybe wane in the second half of the year. Jameis had 99 deep attempts last year. If you want to know why you should question Mike Evans – there were four times you were happy playing him last year for based on your expectations. Sure. You drafted Mike Evans to be great. He played on a team that threw the ball more than almost anybody, had more deep attempts than anybody in football. Four times he finished inside the top 24. That would be the indictment. Five. Five times. Can I get I apologize. six? That's Can I get five. Six? No, it's five. It's five. He, uh, he went from... But each one of those times he was a top 10 guy. And that, so the, he's a weak winner. He's like, you know, we talked about Tyree Kill. The fact that he he busts sometimes. Are you well, comfortable with him as your wide receiver one? No, I'm not. No, I'm not either. Yeah, I don't really want. <laughs> even my, even Mike, who's the highest, doesn't really want Mike Evans as his one. And he's being drafted as the wide receiver eight. I don't yes. like the ADP. Yeah, he's not going to be on my it, team. It leaves very little room for margin. You know what? And my Gron ranking... Gronkowski is going to be a goal line threat. I don't say whatever you want about Rob Gronkowski. I can promise you, Tom Brady's going to look to the one guy he's played with in the red zone a lot. Yeah, my ranking's going to save a lot of people here. I, I <laughs> You're love a it. hero. Well, the, I mean, I like Mike Evans at a – like where I've got him ranked, I'm like too low. But if you're telling me wide receiver eight is where I've got to draft him – You're paying for – Absolutely not. This has come full circle. All right, DJ Chark. Mike Evans or Mike Evans. Want to play a game? <laughs> DJ Chark comes in at wide receiver – 15 on our consensus rankings, which is well above ADP. He's a fifth-round pick. That's why he's on every one of 
almost all of our teams. Wide receiver 20 by average draft position. Mike has him at 11, Jason 12. I have him at 18, which has translated into me being a DJ Chark hater, having him two ahead of his ADP. Um, look, this, this is still a tough situation. Jacksonville, I saw a mock draft this morning. Do you know who went number one overall? Jacksonville drafted a quarterback at one overall in the in the twenty twenty one mock draft. Makes sense. The one you know, if it, it's a push comes to shove situation, even if Gardner is okay, if your franchise is at the basement, which I'm not saying it will be, but that's the way the the mock drafts have Jacksonville at the top for a lot of people. So if their defense is as bad as it is, and they have the chance to draft a player, you know, that's graded out. Uh, as maybe the best quarterback prospect. Right, Sir Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence, highest graded quarterback prospect since Andrew Luck in 20, you know, 10 years ago. So what do you do? Do you stick with a six round guy that kind of was okay on a team that loses a lot of games? Look, if they have the first overall pick, they're going to take a quarterback. Yeah. But but that I, doesn't mean this year. I don't is think void. they're going to no. be the first overall pick. Gardner Minshew was 500 as a starter, he was six and six. Their they, defense is. I, their defense was bad last year too. Not this bad. <laughs> well, it has I'm just gotten worse. Saying if if you win if you win four games, you're not the number one pick overall. It, but anyway, so back to DJ Chark. Uh, he was uh, it, seemingly out of nowhere, but he really wasn't. He was a second round pick. He had he's very tall, very fast in the in the mold of uh, you know a younger AJ Green. And you paired him with Gardner Minshew. I love talking about deep passes, but Gardner Minshew had the best pass rating on deep attempts last year. Better than Patrick Mahomes. Better than Kirk Cousins. And that part of that is because he has uh, he has players like Chris Conley and DJ Chark. DJ Chark turned into the number one receiver uh, for Jacksonville. And the, I, I can't believe that he's going in the fifth and sometimes the sixth round. We talked about this early early in the offseason, whether or not we could make DJ Chark a breakout for our age, for our ultimate draft kit. And we decided we couldn't because he's already broken out, except he, not according to where you're drafting right. him. You're drafting him as the wide receiver 20. That's not someone who broke out. From weeks one to 11, <clears throat> he was the wide receiver five. Then he dealt with some injuries or maybe just you know regressed to the mean, depending on what you well, believe he, was. He did have an injury. He had an ankle injury for the final 25% or so of the season. Sure, but you know players play through that, get better, get back. But here's the thing. He was legitimately good, statistically great. Uh, Josh Hermsmeyer from 538 did this great new write-up. Uh, with a new metric, separation over expectation. So it's basically um, how how good they the player is doing compared to what most players would do in that situation. And DJ Chark's 2019, they 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 charted the last three seasons. DJ Chark's last year ranks first among all players in that metric. He is a separator. So you talk about Minchu was good throwing a deep ball. Well, it helps to have the best sure. separator down the field. You can hear more on DJ Chark on the Fire and Ice episode. Right. Last Monday, Mike made uh, the case further. A.J. Brown comes in at number 16 on our consensus wide receiver rankings. I have him at 13, Jason at 17, Mike at 18. You are living a boom-bust type of life with A.J. Brown, but it was really, really boom from week 12 on last year. Just kind of uh, took the fantasy world by storm and – Won, a, won people a lot of championships that invested in A.J. Brown. The question marks around him have all been around what Ryan Tannehill will you get? Right. Because it wasn't pretty with Marcus Mariota at the beginning of the year. Obviously, A.J. Brown was a rookie. I kind of, you know, you get a complete free pass with rookie season plus Marcus Mariota. But with Ryan Tannehill, he was a monster. The yeah. targets went up. Everything went up. Yeah, and A.J. Brown, I mean, it, it took until about week 10 for the Titans to go, oh, maybe we should uh, use AJ Brown the whole time, and like he was stupid Tajay Sharp. He was on the field for about sixty percent of the snaps up through that point, which is absolutely ludicrous. But I mean, over twenty yards of reception—that's 
also ludicrous. This is, it's not happening. Again, I, I can't 8. possibly. 8.9 yards after the catch per reception, I, which I, was, I, I think, can, number one in football. I cannot project those types of numbers for A.J. Brown, but he is extremely interesting. This is – it's funny. We have this clump of players, you know, like Mike Evans, a 60-catch guy. Yeah, A.J. Brown, what's the ceiling for receptions for A.J. Brown? 80. On this – ooh, 80. Yeah, I think you that's, think he can get to eighty? Well, you said ceiling. Seven, I think seventy. I think that's where he caps out at because we don't know if he's going to end up. You like you said, he was on the field sixty percent. If he's a hundred percent player, if he becomes the read from week one, I I don't have him for that. But I think that's the ceiling. But even still, he's not a hundred. Like his best, his best case scenario is never going to be a possession consistent guy. He's going to be a little bit more boom bust. Yeah, those those games last year, week twelve on. He was on a 66 reception pace when he started to get the big boom games. But we have a small sample size with A.J. Brown, plain and simple. Sure. Very small sample size. I don't think the fantasy community has overinflated his ADP because we thought maybe that would happen. Tennessee had a run in the playoffs. I think it's been reasonable. So he's the kind of player that you love as your wide receiver, too. Mm -hmm. He's a perfect two, especially if you have somebody a little bit more stable. Yes, I was going to say that. If you if you were able to get a, you know a Julio or even first round, you take Michael Thomas, you get someone with that is a hundred reception guy. Or what if you, you go wide running back, running back, and get Woods and AJ Brown? Oh, yeah, I'll oh, take it, baby. That'd yes, nice. Calvin Ridley comes in at seventeen. We all have him ranked at sixteen. Oh, we are clearly on Team Calvin Ridley. Yeah. So uh, his his ADP guys sixteen. All right. So the All world right. is on the exact same plane. Oh man, I thought we were like breaking news that Calvin Ridley is projected to be a breakout in fantasy since, football. Since nineteen ninety, only eight wide receivers with uh there are only eight wide receivers with seventeen plus touchdowns and sixteen hundred receiving yards in their first two seasons combined. So those are names like Randy Moss, Odell Beckham, Marquise Colston, Larry Fitzgerald, AJ Green, Julio Jones. <laughs> That's a, that's a list Moon I would like hands. to be on. Moon oh, hands. Moon oh, hands. oh man, Hakeem, Hakeem Nick. Butler, Hakeem Nix. Hakeem Nix. Yes, you that's Butler. <laughs> yeah, I was going Cardinals and Calvin Ridley. So uh, he pretty much mirrored his rookie year. I mean, statistically speaking, right. he's he scores touchdowns. He finished at twenty five last year, but in thirteen games, so he's a little bit better actually overall uh, on a pace. And then he was number twenty in his in his rookie year. So and he played a bizarre. It was very similar to AJ. Uh, Brown in the sense that he wasn't on the field as much as you would have wanted him to be on the field until he had to be. But Muhammad Sanu is gone, and Austin Hooper is gone. So this is this is you're trying to get the Chris Godwin this year. You're trying to get the guy that going into the season you go, I love him as a number two, but he has zero zero chance to be the number one for this team because you know Julio's there because Mike Evans is there. It's almost hard to remember. That last year, it felt – I remember us saying, like, well, he can't be the one because Mike Evans had been a dominant one, and now it seems like, well, no, we could have seen – you know, it seems impossible that he could be the one after this season, but I don't think that is impossible. So that's the upside that you're hoping when you spin that 16th wide receiver pick on Calvin Ridley. After they traded Muhammad Sanu, Calvin Ridley was averaging six receptions and 82 yards a game. Like that's those are those are big boy numbers, and I get that Austin Hooper was injured for some of those games as well. There's a lot of things at play when Ridley really started to take off last year before his injury. But how many touchdowns do you have him projected for? Oh, I because his rookie that up. season he put up ten, seven last year despite missing three games. He has been a touchdown beast. Well, he's someone's got to catch the touchdowns that Julio refuses to. He I've just got bats him down. I. <laughs> I only have him down for six. I've got him for eight. Yeah, I was going to say over under of eight based on his how he's his pace has been at or above that. Push. But, push. But he, we know he has the ability to be a touchdown guy. He's, he, look, he is also one of these elite route runners. I mean, mm -hmm. We're not breaking news here telling people about Calvin Ridley for the first time. It, the fantasy world is on Calvin Ridley. Most vacated targets of any team. Don't forget Austin Hooper is gone. He was a first round NFL draft pick for a reason because he's a he's a, yes. he's a great wide receiver. It, right. it, I, honestly, I do forget that. Like Calvin Ridley was a first round pick by a team when when they drafted him, you went, "Really?" You, you also have guaranteed passing volume there. You just yeah. know that Matt Ryan's going to throw the ball 
a lot. And Odell Beckham comes in at 18. Oh, Odell Beckham goodness. Jr. finished at 18 last year. Oh, how the oh, mighty I'm sorry, have he fallen. finished. Uh, his ADP is 18 this year. Finished at 26 last year. And yes, he, his first three years in the league, 6 5 4 in fantasy finish. But the last three years have been rough 83rd, 16th, 26th. Yes, there have been injuries. Yes, there have been injuries he's played through. Yes, 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 we have excuses for Odell. But here we are. Excuses or no excuses, three straight years of disappointment. Look, if I'm grabbing, you know, AJ Brown or Odell Beckham, someone in in this range, I this he's he's the Ronald Jones of my wide receivers. I was not high on him last year. I I didn't, uh, you know, I was I was calling for the Browns to to be a bust. But I look at the opportunity here. You don't have to draft Odell Beckham in the first round. You're getting him in the third round, the the back of the third round as the wide receiver eighteen. There's there's nobody in this range that I think has the ceiling that Odell Odell Beckham's ceiling is the wide receiver one. He had a thousand Correct. yards last year, plenty of targets, um, and was a complete you still unmitigated that's the disaster. Case? I still believe that is. The I mean, case, when he yes. when he was putting up the five and four finish, he was getting 158, 169 targets last year, 133, and you get Kevin Stefanski coming in. Do you think that the target? The targets could be there in this offense for him to actually finish number one. I think they can be there. I'm not projecting it because we have him down here at sure, wide receiver. Sure, sure. I'm just asking. Yeah, I, I still believe in the talent of Odell Beckham, and and Andy referenced the fire and ice. Uh, or when did I talk about Odell Beckham? I don't know recently, but anyways, I, so I'll make the case. Listen again. to all the episodes <laughs> and find it really quickly. Uh, when I was researching for. Odell Beckham, I came across a quote from December that I don't hear people talking about very much, but it was Beckham it talks about something happened to his body in training camp, and we're used to seeing players on the injury report week in and week out, you know, you you just... You, if it's a Patriot, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yes, for the Patriots, for sure, but you, and you just, you, it's just a glancing blow, it's whatever. I see him all on the injury report all the time, but Odell Beckham was hurt you watch the tape of Odell Beckham and even with all the tumult that was going on with the team bad play from Baker Mayfield like Odell was not the same player that we have that we saw two years ago so I I make the excuse I'm I'm fine I'm, I'm there I know it's an excuse but he was hurt he has the ability to be a top five wide receiver and to get a player like that at wide receiver 18 is it's wild the easy way to not go through the Odell Beckham experience in 2020 is to not draft him. So this is a – That would – If you don't want to deal yeah. with it, like the, there are certain players that are an adventure. They're not like – this is not Julio Jones. We just right. talked about Julio yesterday. This is not Julio Jones. It's an adventure. <laughs> oh, a, at best, yeah. I mean – Put we, on my fedora. Give look, me my whip. You're not wrong about those narratives about the injury, but we, we – Unequivocally, he has not done it with Baker Mayfield. That is, Questions that is, about that Baker, Stefanski, Beckham's health, Cleveland offense, Cleveland in general Baker, has a little bit of a... Uh, sure. Baker was bad. His offensive line was much worse than the year prior, and Odell Beckham was injured. Those are the ways... I guess that's why his ADPs were attacked. Those are the ways that I think uh, there's opportunity for change where I, we know the offensive line is better. That's, that's a uh, barring future injury. That's a done deal. I don't think Baker can be any worse than he was last year. So if he gets better because his O-line is better, and then if Odell is healthy, all of a sudden, you know, he turns 130 targets into 12, 13, 1400 yards and 10 touchdowns. T.Y. Hilton at 19, Juju Smith-Schuster at 20 in our consensus ranks. Hilton is still my favorite pick in all fantasy drafts. Mm. He is being drafted as the wide receiver 24 in the back of the fifth round which means I get T.Y. Hilton as my wide receiver, too, in any league I want. Sure. And I feel good about that because his historical uh, – can, can I tell you something? Sure. We did a mock draft last night for our league of record, me and my co-owner. Guess what wide receiver you got? T.Y. Hilton. You're darn right. You yeah, did. that makes sense. I have him at 17. I mean, when he's played uh. football, he's been a top 25 wide receiver, so he's being drafted at his absolute basement with a better quarterback right. coming into this year. The question mark, yes, you could say it's all – struggle with the injuries last year. Historically speaking, he's played the majority of the time. Sometimes hurt, but uh, fantasy finishes have been inside the top 
25 every single season um, that he's played outside of last year when he played 10 games. And he so, got he was activated. There was a little bit of a <gasps> – when T.Y. Hilton was not ready for camp, you, don't, you never like to see that, but he has been activated. Three of his first five games last year, he was a top 15 wide receiver. So he was – on he was on track to get it done, and here are the the differences between Jacoby Brissett and Philip Rivers. Jacoby only went deep forty three times; thirty five percent of his passes were catchable. Rivers seventy nine times went deep, and nearly forty two percent of his deep attempts were, were catchable. Philip Rivers is a sixty five percent completion percent passer. Jacoby was sixty percent last year. Like you're getting. Higher, uh, higher fantasy point targets from Philip Rivers, and you're getting more accurate targets from Philip Rivers. Like, I, I worry. You worry about the I player's worry, body. I worry about the player's body. I, right. If if you could guarantee me, T. Y. Hilton is he healthy as a horse the whole season. He would he would fly up my rankings like a, um, like a colt. Oh, healthy as a colt <laughs> all season. Well done. <laughs> um, but that, the reality well the, re the reality is. It was soft tissue issues last year. It's a soft tissue issue this year. He's oh. over 30 and w there's no preseason. There's no train I mean there's you know there's 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 medical analysis that talk about worry for injuries not having the same level of ramp up that these guys usually have. So I, I just have I have a, 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 a You didn't pull out your tape recorder and press play on your AJ Green argument, did you? It no, I mean I put him right in that boat. Seven straight years of being a dominant player. And for me, it's it's the film as much as it is a, the fantasy finish consistency. He's one of the best wide receivers in all of football. One of the most refined, one of the most regularly uh, winning downfield intermediate routes. Just needs a quarterback. Think he'll have one. Not that worried about the injury. Maybe you miss a game or two. But uh, historically speaking, he's played the majority of them. Last year, 44% snap percentage in the games he played. So he was playing hurt. Last year was almost a lost season yeah. for T.Y. Hilton altogether. So um, I just can't pass on the draft position. If you told all these arguments, I'm passing on T.Y. Hilton if he's costing me a third rounder. Yeah, I mean, this is like back of the fifth round. Well, I'm going to have him that's in fair. every single league. There is upside there, a little bit of risk, but that's baked into the ADP. So I, I think that is a fair argument. Juju Smith-Schuster. Big disparities in our rankings here. He comes in at 20 on our consensus wide receiver ranks, but Jason's got him at 13. Mike at 25. Warms my heart. I have him at 28. You fools. And uh, his current ADP is very high. It's wide receiver 11. So even Jason just made a face <laughs> because he didn't realize he was below ADP. He, th he assumed based on the That's environment he's in that he was below ADP, but he's not. That's a lot of money you're shelling out for, for a guy that you had a lost season. You are seasons. asking him. You're, you're, you're kind of – you're boxed in. You're starting Juju. If you draft him where he's going right now, he's in your lineup no matter what. Are you going to be happy? That's the real question. He – last year was a mess through and through. Yeah. Uh, he was not great on the field. We've talked about his struggles uh, on the outside. He is a slot receiver. He is, he is a slot wide receiver, yes. Now, Big Ben can fix a lot of things really, really fast. And he knows how to utilize Juju in that slot uh, receiver position. So that'd be ideal. That's the that's the nice scenario. You might end up with that number nine finish you got back in 2018 when he had 166 targets. That's a lot. Um, I don't think you're going to get that from Juju Smith-Schuster. And I think you have to pay too much. I am surprised that his ADP is is still this high, that people are still on him. But I am still on him because here's why. He's a great wide receiver. If you're going to tell yeah, me that you're, last you're year – on the player. If you're going to tell me that, that last year and the fact that he was not good and that Deontay Johnson was – uh, you know, better. And it, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say Juju is somehow not a great wide receiver? You watch his rookie year. You watch his sophomore year. He's a dominant beast of a man, a great route runner, great hands, great rapport with Big Ben, putting up fantastic fantasy numbers for two seasons. And then last year, the Steelers just were, uh, I mean, that 
We have to throw that season out from an offensive perspective. They scrapped and clawed and did whatever they could to manufacture wins, but now Big Ben is back and Juju is still a great wide receiver. You look at, you know, DeAndre Hopkins comes out and, you know, he's the number five guy in in uh you know whatever in it was fantasy in in in, in <laughs> i fantasy. don't know where you're going yeah so in 2015 okay he was the number four he was great is his third year after a great sophomore year and then he falls to you know in 2016 has you know pretty much a lost season stinks with a backup quarterback and people are like well he's not good he's not great it was just targets that was the narrative with Hopkins. Uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, Hopkins was great. Yeah, but this is not DeAndre Hopkins. No, it's not. It's Juju, and he's great. Well, here I'll make the identical <laughs> argument I made going into last year when I told everybody not to draft Juju Smith-Schuster. He had 166 targets. That's a lot. Coming into last year, I said, is he going to get more targets than 166 when he finished at number nine? No, there's no chance he is. He was being drafted ahead of number nine. There was no chance the volume was going up. If he if his peak season that we've seen is number nine overall fantasy finish, and you have to count on a bounce back, and he's being drafted as wide receiver eleven, to me you're being he's being drafted at his ceiling. Well, you can't you can't say that was his peak season because his touchdown number was I can low say it based statistically on, no, on his peak season. Well, he's got the that's his highest season ever. You're saying that that is that is presently his, his highest fantasy. No, season. but that's not what you were saying. You were saying that that is his absolute peak. 166 targets is the most he'll ever get in his career. Sure, peak targets, but the touchdowns were down that year. That was the argument of why he was being drafted. But he's never ahead. had them up, right? Uh, I, I have don't we ever have seen his... him? I, that's all I'm saying. Like We've never seen him. It's not like a bounce back. It's not like Mike Evans had a down touchdown year. Juju is a slot wide receiver, which by extension, a lot of the times that doesn't translate to touchdown totals in general. Well, it does for Cooper Cup. It does for Cooper Cup, but that's a an outlier, not a norm. I, I believe that he can put up more than the the the, the I, his touchdown number can increase from what he put up I don't know if he'll get the 166 targets and the questions of can Juju thrive without Antonio Brown being there to be Batman on the field I, Un, it's, unanswered still it's still unanswered but for the people who are saying well anyone could succeed with Antonio Brown on the field they didn't like it, it was it was the Antonio Brown show until Juju showed up. Who Juju was rookie year? That was the most receiving yardage that the number two option had ever seen for Pittsburgh. While Antonio Brown was the number one guy, and he did that his rookie year. I'm with Jason that I think he is a great player, but I also have there, I'm not drafting him at wide the, receiver eleven. I will say this: I'm not I'm not uh, that in. I I believe in him. I think if you draft him at wide receiver eleven, you could very well end up happy. Uh, that being said, his risk is not baked in here um, at that draft cost. I was surprised early in the offseason. I said that he would be appropriately valued due to fantasy owners being wiser. I don't think he is being appropriately valued because the risk is not baked into his ADP. The risk to me being Big Ben. Big Ben's timeline sure. of recovery and his age and having to come back. If we knew Big Ben was Big Ben from two years ago fully healthy, well, sure, but that's not the Big Ben coming into camp this year, and that's not baked in. So, uh, you know, I, I do have a worry there. And for me, we've had these situations where, like, Deontay Johnson and, and Juju. Deontay Johnson is being drafted as the wide receiver 43. Juju is being drafted as the wide receiver 11. I don't see a gap of 30 fantasy f finishes, you know, spots between them. So for me, as he's just not going to end up on my team. Um, if he was wide receiver 20, 25, and you, and you got the upside of Big Ben coming back, I'd be like, it's kind of like the Odell. I yeah, mean, if, it's, it's if, just if like if the Odell was, upside. Yeah, if he was at wide receiver 18, I would be all about yeah. that. I'd say, who has that chance of the top five finish? He, he does. It's just confidence. I don't have, I don't have enough confidence to take him at, at 12. Yeah. Devontae Parker at 21, Cortland Sutton at 22, Tyler Lockett at 23. AJ Green at 24. Talked about AJ Green on the Fire and Ice episode. Jason talked about Lockett on the Fire and Ice episode. I will have one final comment here before we close the show down. 22 Cortland Sutton. Starting to question my own questioning of Cortland Sutton. <laughs> if I, that makes sense. I did that as well, and I moved him up. You moved him up. Yeah, yeah. you have him the highest at 21. I'm starting to uh starting to think that it might be a little bit rosier than. I have believed before for Corlin Sutton. He's just 
if you put him in that place where he's unequivocally the number one on the team, which I think is the right thing he to is. do, yes, then um, wide receiver 25 looks like maybe a value. I mean, last year there was struggles on offense. Denver struggled. Drew Locke came on at the end of the year. No, we didn't see the sample size that we wanted to see of Sutton plus mm -hmm. Locke equals fantasy production. But it was a small four-game stretch when you didn't see that. I'm, so I'm going off of that. He's so talented. What I've watched Cortland Sutton do, great yeah, wide receiver. Exactly. And historically, like I said, for my argument for Michael Gallup, sophomore wide receivers that cross the 1,100-yard mark, historically it is just a great hit rate saying that this player is going to emerge and be excellent for years. So this is like how Jace is talking about. He's just betting on Juju even though you're in this mist where you can't see two feet in front of your face, I do feel that way about Cortland Sutton, but I'm just I'm willing to bet on that player compared to his historical comps. All right, if you want to see all of our rankings, what are we doing next, Brooks? Are we on to quarterbacks or tight ends? Quarterback rankings. Quarterbacks. So if you want to see all of our rankings, all of our in-depth player-by-player projections, um, each of us independently, we go through, we we sat out, we adjust, we modify players, um, every wide receiver, every running back, one by one. And we are always tweaking and modifying and, and making adjustments based on the information that we have. And those things are all in proportion to how those quarterbacks are going to produce for those teams and the offenses year to year. And all that stuff's in the ultimate draft kit, along with the video player profiles. If there's a player we didn't mention at wide receiver today that you wanted to hear us talk about, like maybe Marquise Hollywood Brown. Hollywood! You can go listen to the player profile on the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. That'll do it today mm. for this episode of the Fantasy Footballers, and we will be back with you tomorrow. It's a long ways from now. <laughs> we'll see you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>